and I want to welcome you to our awakening service this morning. If this is your first time here, we are so glad to have you, and we want you to know more about what's going on in this church. We've got a three-month calendar that gives you every event from now until the end of May that you can uh, join us, and on the back, it has um, explanations and um, information about all our ongoing programs so you or your youth or your child can be connected to the life of First United Methodist Church. We've got uh, snacks and coffee over there, uh, but, but again, we just want you to feel welcome this morning in this place. Um, it's been a beautiful weekend. Um, it's amazing uh, with that cold air that came in and just sort of, we were at um, Wilderness Trail with the Compromands this weekend, and it was, uh, it really was fantastic just to be not just in that place that was so pretty, but to be with our youth um, as, as they're continuing on their, uh, their joining here at First United Methodist Church. Um, let's all stand uh, this morning, and we'll sing praise. We're going to sing one. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get you singing early this morning. I want to hear, hear the words back to me. It goes like this. Repeat after me. And I am free to ride. Let me hear you. And I am free to dance. I'm free, I am free to live for you. I am free to live for you. And I am free. I am free. Right, that's good. Here we go.
morning. There are guys. <laughs> this is Good. Keith's first time with us. <laughs> Good morning. Ha. I'm your new senior pastor, Keith Terman. I actually started in July, but this is the first time I've been in this service for the whole service. Because Becky is preaching all day today, and so I've been really excited. And so I'm, I'm responsible, I've learned, for sharing the, the announcements. But first of all, I just want to welcome, welcome you to worship today. Uh, you're an amazing church, and I'm just so excited that I get to be your pastor. And there's just a lot going on, and I, I'm probably going to miss some important things, but it's okay, because Michael is going to follow me with some announcements, so he's going to pick up my slack. First thing I want to say is every Wednesday we have a nice gathering in this room around tables with really good food, and it's always a lot of fun. So if you haven't, if you haven't come on Wednesday, um, I want to invite you to, to do that. There's an insert in your bulletin that you can, uh, you can let us know if you want to come and have food. Um, also on Wednesday, I'm accustomed, I do announcements on Wednesdays, and I'm accustomed to um, seeing our fair trade stuff in the back. And I've, I have forgotten to talk about fair trade on Wednesdays for about six months, but I've finally gotten into this rhythm because I've started buying the coffee. Like the French roast organic dark stuff is really, really good. And the chocolate is good. And what I like about the, the fair trade stuff is, is not only are we, are we helping farmers and uh, doing all that, that that is, but the profits that we make on fair trade stuff, all of the profits that we make um, go into our ministry. So like last year, the money went for after school program. This year, it, it's going to the breakfast and Bible program uh, that, we, that we have in, in our high schools. Um, and then on top of that, the profit that the United Methodist Church makes off of it, and I'm not sure how much all of this is, maybe like 15 cents on the pound of coffee goes to UMCOR, which is, which is the group that shows up when there's a national, the first to show up to natural disasters and the last to leave. So it's just like an amazingly good thing. And the bag of coffee is only seven bucks. Um, so, and all of that happens. So fair trade is here. Um, so, so buy some of that. And yeah, read the announcements that are in the bulletin. There's probably one or two of these that I'm supposed to mention. But you can read, and, and it's all really important. <laughs> That's good. That's a good one. Um, youth, tonight we're on a regular schedule, so please come tonight. We'll have our, our fellowship and our, and our food in here tonight. We're also regular scheduled this week. Tuesday morning we'll be in the uh, middle school for breakfast and Bible. Wednesday night we'll have our uh, music workshop on um, down with Scott and Carl and all those uh, down below. And you'll hear a little bit more about that next week. And we all have... Um, uh, Breakfast and Bible on Thursday, so that we got a lot going on with uh, with youth. Um, I know we've got some special guests here this morning. Uh, Tyler, do you want to uh, introduce, uh, or is it Scott first? Okay, this is Scott Taylor is going to have an announcement first. Good morning. <laughs> I'm bumping in line because I got to get get back upstairs before uh, Becky finishes the sermon. <laughs> um, so my name's Scott Taylor. I'm the director of music and worship arts here at First United Methodist Church. It's so good to see you. We've got so many great events coming up um, in the next couple weeks, and I've got two that I really want to highlight to you. Um, next Sunday, um, we are gathering um, forces with musicians from our church and musicians from Western Carolina University. We just met with the concert choir this past uh, Thursday night, um, put about 80 people up in our choir room, and I got to tell you, this is one of the most fantastic collaborations, if not the most fantastic collaboration I've ever been a part of. There is such a positive energy. The music is electrifying. We've been wanting to do collaborations like this for so long, and it's wonderful to see it come to fruition. Um, we're so excited about that. Next Sunday at 7 o'clock, a choir concert with the concert choir, which is the top um, choir at Western Carolina uh, University and our, own, and our chancel choir. And so we're really looking forward to that. The next Sunday is May 6th. And so if you're one of my music makers, because we rehearse this every single Wednesday, what happens on May 6th? We have our musical, yes, our musical about Daniel and the lion's den. The kids sound fantastic. Um, I, don't, I don't know if I can remember a children's choir that sings like this. They are just unbelievable. So we are looking so forward to this musical on May 6th. On that day, the people from the 830 service, members of our church from the 830 service, are going to be joining us here. I was told to say they'll probably get here early because their service starts a little bit before yours. So know that's going on. But also know that in the past, this room has been very crowded on Music Makers Day. So um, we look forward to, to welcoming uh, 
people from our community into our church and having the opportunity to extend the hand of hospitality as we celebrate the, um, the end of our music maker season. It's so good to see you all. Thank you so much. Tyler. Good morning. Uh, my name is Tyler Beamer. I'm chair of the scholarship committee and welcome to Dollars for Scholars Sunday where we have the opportunity to help our future and current college students achieve their goals of earning a college degree. In doing so, we assist in the advancement of our community and the lives of others. Your donations can be placed in the offering plate. Just be sure to include dollars for scholars on your check or envelope. Our church contributed nearly $8,000 to the cause last year. The youth at this church are increasing in numbers by leaps and bounds thanks to the hard work, dedication, and the leadership of many at our church. Let's see if we can contribute even more this year to support our youth in fulfilling their dreams and aspirations. It's my great pleasure to introduce Maddie Donlin, who is a 2017 scholarship recipient and a student at UNC Asheville. Let's give her a warm welcome. Good morning. So I'd first like to thank you all for letting me come and speak to you this morning. I am currently a rising senior at the University of North Carolina at Asheville. I am planning on receiving a bachelor's degree in business management by the end of next spring. Having this experience of receiving education from a liberal arts school is like no other. The diversity on campus and the support that campus gives to its students is phenomenal, in my opinion. The small classroom sizes allows me to build strong relationships with my professors and classmates. I also have two executive positions within two student organizations on campus. These positions are formatted to give me experience in the field I want to potentially go into after college. Before I enrolled in UNCA, I attended Haywood Community College through the transfer program because, like most, but not all 17-year-olds, I had no idea what I wanted to be. Growing up, college was not an option. It was an obligation. So I buckled down in high school and made the grades, joined the clubs, applied for the scholarships, and worked at the church's preschool part-time with Miss Sydney and her exemplary staff. Being a recipient of Dollars for Scholars Scholarship for the past three years has truly aided me in my college career. Last year, I was lucky enough to be the recipient of two of your scholarships, which was the Dollars for Scholars and the Jane Sutton Memorial Scholarship. Without receiving these scholarships, I would have had to have taken out loans, and I am proud to say that as of right now, I am debt-free in going into my senior year of college. This honestly would have not happened if I did not receive scholarships. Having the Dollars for Scholars Scholarship each year throughout my college career has been a blessing. Receiving the Jane Sutton Memorial Scholarship last year was something that I hold true to my heart. She was the main reason I applied for the scholarships at this very church. I was hesitant at first, but with her encouraging words of wisdom and her unforgettable smile, I took the plunge, and I am here today standing in front of you all saying that these scholarships do make a difference. College is the next big step, and so many people are turned away by the idea because they simply cannot afford it. By donating to this program, you are giving those people the opportunity to better themselves. College is stressful, but the anxiety is lessened when you know financially you are able to afford it. So any money that you contribute to this program would be greatly appreciated. By donating your loose change or writing out a reasonable check will make a difference in someone's life. You will be giving the next generation the opportunity, the voice, the chance to better themselves, just as you have done for me. And from the bottom of my heart, I thank you. All right, I think we've got Matt Johnson here. Are you all ready? Whew, breathe. I had a lot of announcements this morning. Thanks for that. <laughs> Good morning. My name is Matthew Johnson, and I wanted to start by saying thank you for giving me the time to talk about this upcoming event that we've got going for the after-school program. I think we all know we have an amazing after-school program staff here. The First United Methodist Church of Waynesville after-school program began in August of 16 after the principal of Waynesville Middle School members of law enforcement as well as Department of Social Services brought forth a need for a safe and supervised after school care for middle school, pro or for middle school students. The absence of safe, supervised after school care uh, left middle school students to wander the area without parameters. Conveniently located up the road from Waynesville Middle School, our church had the perfect facility to host an after school program for these middle school students. We were able to use the endowment funds to staff the program throughout its first year. After these community leaders expressed concern, the FUMC after school program opened its doors for students to have a very safe place for supervision to be after school. This program is helpful for students and also with our parents. 
Students can walk directly up, to, or excuse me, to the youth area at FUMC and stay until five o'clock. When they are picked up by a parent or a guardian, students will receive a snack upon arrival and are able to choose to play sports outside, watch movies, play video games, board games, and even maybe work on their homework. Uh, students are supervised by four to five program staff members. The staff engages these students by investing time and building relationships to, por to support these students. Parents can be confident that their child is safe and always being supervised. The program has grown since the beginning of 2016, and that's really why I'm here to start talking about this uh, golf tournament coming up. There are 130 students registered in 16-17 school year. As of April of 17 and 18 school year, there were 170 students registered. The program is continuing to grow and fill a need in our community. This program was able to start, as we heard last week from Bishop McCleskey, because of our permanent endowment fund. The after school program is now going to be funded through individual donations and the general fund of First United Methodist Church of Waynesville. Our goal with Swing for the Kids is to, sorry, sorry, is to fully fund this program for a year so that the church budget can be used to answer more of our community's needs. We will be following up, the tournament is called Swing for the Kids. We will be having a large, large tournament and we hope to see you all out there. There are always opportunities for sponsorships. We'll be having it at Waynesville Country Club. And again, thank you for your time. Thanks, Matt. That's exciting. Before we get up and, and greet each other, I got one more very important announcement. We also have another special guest here, our district superintendent, Randy Harry. He is here for our church conference meeting, which is going to happen right after this service. Uh, hopefully, the, those who are attending the other services will be joining us at 10 o'clock. Um, kind of uh, in, in light of what Matt was saying about our growth in the after school program, uh, we have amazing growth in our, our preschool program. Um, so we're kind of in this place where if we're going to make room and keep growing, uh, we've, got to, we've got to make that space. And we've been talking about this and announcing it, and uh, that meeting is today. Uh, so hopefully all of you will plan to hang around. I think we're going to make some extra coffee, and, and there will be some snacks. But uh, what, what's going to happen is we're going to hear about the need, we're going to hear about the specifics, and then um, we need to vote on, on moving forward. So it's a, it's a church conference and a church vote, and a lot of folks from the master plan team, we're going to be, sh be sharing stuff. So I, I think it's going to be an exciting but also very important meeting, and um, all of you, I hope, will, will plan to stay. So if you could just take a moment to stand and greet your neighbor. Um, and let's share the love and peace of Christ. Joyful noise to the Lord on the earth. 
Lord of all creation Of water, earth, and sky Heaven's all your tabernacle Glory to the Lord on high God of wonders beyond our galaxy You are
Now this time, if the children would come up front, join, join Keith. Okay, good morning. How are y'all doing? Did you know today is Earth Day? Yay! What a great day. Pastor Becky is going to talk about cre creation connection. That's her sermon title. And I want to tell you about my vacation last week. My wife, Chan, and I went to Costa Rica on this like really budget vacation. We stayed in a really cheap hotel. And when we were at, at this hotel, I was out on the balcony and I was, just, I was just reading this book, and all of a sudden, a monkey jumped right down on the rail, like right beside me, and it scared me to death. And it went running all the way across. You know about monkeys? Yes. Yeah. We saw these amazing birds that were real colorful. There was a sloth that lived at our hotel. Do you all know what a sloth is? It moves exactly like that, really slow. I mean, it was just really amazing. And so I was blown away and loves to sleep. There were lizards, gigantic lizards. And at this cheap hotel where we stayed, you had to climb these stairs to get to our room. And there was, there was all of this, this um, green brush and bushes. And I was walking up these steps one day after being out on the beach. And this giant iguana jumped out and hissed at me. like, And it scared me to death. And so I caught it. And I brought it back to show you this morning in here. That's just, that's, that's just a joke. But, but what I realized was God creates so many amazing things. And when we are in creation and when we experience stuff like this, I have learned in my life that we can sometimes learn something about God. And I just think God must have so much fun uh, creating the thing that God creates. Well, Nolan and his family, they've got a lizard. And it's not an iguana and it's not gigantic. What, what's the, what kind of lizard is it, Nolan? Baby dragon. It's a baby dragon. A bearded dragon. Oh, it's not a gecko? No. Oh! You, well, let's see it. Let's see the bearded dragon. Whoa. That's really awesome. Can y'all see can, Maybe I can hold it up. Can y'all see it? It's not like the dragon in The Hobbit, it's tiny. and it's tiny. It's a, dragon. it's a bearded dragon. Isn't that awesome? Now, I'm going to have to confess to you, I thought we had a gecko. So I don't know a thing about a bearded dragon, but I know some things about a gecko, and I've seen a picture of a gecko, and that's what I want to talk about. <laughs> Just saying. But they look, they look like this. They look like this. And, and there's, probably, there's probably some similarities. But maybe the bearded dragon, like the gecko, like the gecko lives everywhere, like on every continent in the world except for Antarctica, I guess where it's maybe a little cold. They can, like whenever their environment changes, they, they don't mind change. They're not like, you know, sometimes change is really hard for humans. But geckos don't have any problems. So they, they like live in the rainforest and in, in the cold mountains. They, they live in the deserts. And they have really, and I don't know about, about bearded dragons, but they probably are similar to that. And, like, their tails are really cool. Like, they can provide camouflage. They store fat in their tail. So, like, if they get really hungry, they can just get some food out of their tail. <laughs> um, it helps them to be camouflaged so that, like, predators don't, like, if they're in trouble or in danger, like, they, it, they can camouflage them in the trees and stuff. Um, also, like, I don't know about the bearded dragon's tail, but a lot of lizards, certainly with the gecko, if a predator, like something that wants to eat it, gets a hold of its tail, it can lose its tail. Have you all ever heard of that before? And then, like, it just grows a new one. It's just really cool. Well, the thing about a gecko, and I was looking at this bearded dragon, and he's looking at me. 
about his eyes. Did you know that, that some lizards, like a gecko, they don't have eyelids? Like, they don't have eyelids. You know how, like, like everybody close your eyes. And now, now, open real quick so you can see your neighbor's eyelids. Like, what? Yeah. So, like, we can close our eyes. And when we close our eyes, it's dark and we can't see anything, right? Well, the, the gecko and some lizards, maybe the bearded dragon, they don't have eyelids to close their eyes. They've got this, like, clear film that they can cover their eyes with. And they'll lick, like, you, I've seen a picture, and they'll lick their eyes. I was going to ask Nolan if his, if, his, if his lizard had licked its eyes because it didn't have any eyelids. And I thought, as I was learning, as I was learning about the lizard, I thought, what can I learn about God? And I thought, you know, there's a, there's a, 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 a he just licked his eye? Oh, he just, he just licked the cage. All right, well, I want to read you, I want to read you a psalm. I want to read you something from the Bible. Can y'all catch the bubble? This is from Psalm 121. Okay, y'all listening? This is, this is something about God. I will lift up my eyes to the hills. From where will my help come? My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. He will not let your foot be moved. He who keeps you will not slumber. He who keeps Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. Did y'all hear that? God neither slumbers nor sleeps. The Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun shall not strike you by day nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all evil. He will keep your life. The Lord will keep your going out and your coming in from this time on and forevermore. And when I learned that the lizard doesn't have eyelids, meaning he never closes his eyes, I thought God is like that. And that's what this, this verse from the Bible tells us, is that God's eyes are always open and that God can always see us. So that if our environment is changing, um, we don't have to be afraid of change because God is with us. Or if we're afraid, you know, like there's a, we don't have really predators like a, a, a bearded dragon would have. Uh, but if we're afraid or we're worried when we're scared, we can remember that, that God doesn't sleep. God doesn't close God's eyes. He's, God's always, God, can, God can always see us, and God is, is always with us. And, you know, I think uh, an important lesson for us, too, is if we want to be like God, um, we can always have our eyes open, too. Now, we've got to sleep, right, because we're humans, and we have eyelids, and we've got to get our rest. But that we've got to remember that we not only open our eyes so that we can see God, but we open our eyes so that we can see each other because God wants us to help each other and to protect each other and to make sure that we're all good and okay, right? Isn't that cool? Well, let's, can we say thanks to Nolan for bringing, his, for bringing his bearded dragon? Wasn't that cool on Earth Day? Yay, thank you, Nolan. Okay, you're awesome. Well, let's pray together. God, thank you for today. Uh, it's Earth Day, and we love our Earth, this Earth that you've created. Uh, thank you for, for creating bearded dragons and, and lizards and monkeys and sloths and uh, the beautiful birds that we see. Um, Lord, thank you for creating us. Uh, help us to know you and, and to love you and to love each other and to care for, for this great planet that you've given us. And we ask this in Christ's name. Amen. So thanks for coming. I'm not sure where you go now, <laughs> but go where you normally go. As our children go back to their seats, we'll ask uh, the ushers to come forward as we give our gifts back.
So now we have the, the privilege of, of praying together as a, as a faith community. And um, there are a few, a few um, prayer focuses that I want to share. Um, one of our, our members, Woody Griffin, his brother Howard died on Monday. His, his um, service was in Louisville, North Carolina. And so our prayers for Woody and his wife, Melita, and, and uh, the Griffin family. Also, uh, Janet Lilly had surgery on Friday morning, and um, the surgery was successful, and she is now at home. Uh, Charles Matlick was in the hospital, and he is now home. And then Ernie Porter is, is having uh, surgery in the morning, so we want to, uh, to be praying for all of them and celebrating with Raymond Caldwell. Uh, Raymond uh, lives at the, uh, at the Haywood Lodge, and he is 95 years old on Thursday, so... That's, that's an awesome thing. So go by, and, go by and see Raymond, even if you don't know him, because it's, it's his birthday week. So are there any other, um, any other uh, needs or praises that, that you would like to share before we pray together? Yes. Meryl Oka. Meryl Oka. Uh-huh. Badly burned last night. She was in labor and spent a night with her kids. Hmm. Badly burned last night. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Melanie Rodriguez and Shay Starnes. Shay, Shay Starnes Starnes passed away this week. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Hey, I uh, I had a friend who uh, unexpectedly wound up with custody of their daughter over the weekend, and I wanted to thank everybody. Um, I sent out a message that. Thanks, Ray. And thanks, and thanks for asking, too. I don't know if you all heard that, but uh, Ray's friend got unexpected custody of his daughter, and he just uh, reached out to his church, and you all responded with stuff. So uh, thanks for sharing that. That makes me happy. Well, let's pray together. God, our, our life in this place is an amazing gift, and, and it begins that moment that you break into to our lives, each of us individually, and you awaken us to who you are and to all that's possible, that we, we find uh, salvation, that we discover that our failures and our mistakes and our sin, um, none of that will, will ever keep us from your love and from your deep desire to, to have us. And we just praise you for that today, that we, that we are loved and that we're forgiven and that then you by design, uh, group us together as a family. And, and you call us to amazing things. And it's frightening sometimes what you call us to. But that you created. Uh, and it's a- appropriate that we celebrate an Earth Day. Uh, because you made Earth happen. And, and every plant and, and every creature in it is, is by your design. And, and you call us to, to people. You call us to witness. And, and you call us to save and to share and to give and to bring laughter and joy and to bring comfort and hope. And we don't always know how to do that. So it's comforting that, that we are a group and that we can uh, shout out to, to each other for help. And I'm grateful for, uh, for this congregation and just a, a willingness to love and to give and, and to make your amazing things happen. Uh, we've, we've shared a number of concerns, Lord, and you, you knew them even before we uh, mentioned them. But we just pray that you would be with each person and each family. Uh, we ask for your healing. We ask for your hope and for your life. Uh, in the name of Christ Jesus, our Lord, we pray. Amen. Good morning. 
It's good to see you all this morning. Our gospel, or not a gospel, but our lesson for today is from Colossians chapter 1, beginning with the verse 15. And it says, He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation, for in him all things in heaven and on earth were created, things visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or powers, all things have been created through him and for him. He himself is before all things, and in him all things hold together. He is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, so that he might come to have first place in everything. For in him all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell, and through him God was pleased to reconcile to himself all things, whether on earth or in heaven, by making peace through the blood of his cross. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. We say thanks be to God. Will you pray with me? May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. So when I was in about third grade, I can remember when I fell in love with being outside. I fell in love with being outdoors, and I grew up in Durham, in the suburbs, in northern, the northern part of Durham. And so you'd think that growing up in a suburb, in a cul-de-sac, we wouldn't have had very many places to explore the outdoors, but you would be dead wrong. We had plenty of places to go and explore. You see, I had a few great friends, and we all had adventurous spirits and big imaginations. And so we would go outside and explore all the time. We would go out into the woods, play games, create trails, sometimes through people's backyards because we were in the suburbs. Um, but then also, you know, we would go on hike, hiking through existing trails that were all around Durham, hiking along creek beds or rivers. And so summer was a glorious time. It was a time of exploration, imagination. We got dirty outside. We found swimming holes to swim in and to cool off, especially because we lived in Durham and it was really humid and really hot a lot of the time. So there's this place called Bobbitt's Hole. It's a little trail over off Coal Mill Road, if you know Durham at all. And, and the trailhead was, I don't know, about half a mile. I don't know, Mom, I don't know how far from our house. But it wasn't far, and it was pretty much a straight shot to get to the trailhead from our house. We could go just follow the road um, all the way down to the end of it, and we could walk or ride our bikes and go and start hiking um, by ourselves as a group, as a little group of friends, which was so fun. Because, you see, we'd hike this trail with our moms or with friends or, or older folks plenty of times, so they had no worries that we knew what we were doing and where we were going. And so it was a little hike that was about a mile and a half um, following the Eno River all the way. And at the end is this glorious swimming hole. And, you know, I was a child, so now if I went back, I'm sure it was playing from this little place. But it was beautiful. And the water just seemed to glisten, and there was this great place to, it was like a sandy beach a little bit, you know, that you could walk into and swim. And there was a nice log that, like, lay out into, in the middle of the river that must have fallen, and um, you could sit on that and jump off of it. And it was so much fun. And so we went there about once a week, I think, in the summer as friends in elementary and middle school. And the trail never got boring. My friends and I often met people while we were walking down the trail, but it seemed like every time we got to the end to Bobbitt's Hole, it was rare if we ever found some other hikers or explorers out there swimming at the same time. So we felt like this little place was our little place. It was our little haven from our suburb, suburban lives, I guess. <laughs> our little spot in creation. And it was holy, and it was sacred to us. So Bobbitt's Hole was where I learned to love and to respect nature and fell in love with being outside and the freedom that it provides. I always loved, I, I learned how to, when you hike, 
you, um, if you bring things with you, you have to take them back out. You can't leave them behind. Leave no trays. I learned about um, you know, different poisonous plants that were important not to touch. I learned about how to look for snakes as you're hiking along the, the trail. And I learned to hike through the riverbed and on river stones and river rocks and to keep having sure-footedness along the journey. And man, I wish I had chacos when I was a kid because that would have been fantastic. I just don't even know if they existed back then, but that's what I would have worn as a, as a kid. And I also learned um, that the hard way one time that um, when you hike near dusk at the end of the day, you probably shouldn't start your hike out when it's already begun to get, like the sun has set, because it gets dark real quick. And um, when you don't have a flashlight because you're not prepared because you're 9 or 10, you know, it's not a good situation. But thankfully, we knew exactly where we were going because we've hiked it so many times. So even though I have hiked this trail and I haven't hiked it for really over a decade, I can still remember all the landmarks on this trail. And I can still remember where the little markers were on the trees where you turned instead of going straight. And I can remember the swimming hole. And I could probably draw you a picture of it, of what it looks like in this beautiful place to cool off in the summertime. So this place is a part of my soul. It's integral to my childhood. And it's my holy ground. The more I centered my heart and thought about what would be the focus for the sermon today on creation care, because Keith and I are doing another two-part thing, so he'll follow next week and talk a little bit more about creation. This question kept coming up for me. Why do we feel drawn to nature? Why is it that we have a yearning to be outside? Now, I know that not all of us like to be fully immersed in nature. Not all of us have that same yearning. Some of us would rather enjoy the good view from a climate control vehicle or maybe, you know, from a, a nice restaurant with a big, big view of the parkway. Or maybe some of us would like, like the screened-in porch situation, you know, with a fan going and no bugs. I get it because there's allergies and there's bug bites and those things are not fun. And some of us, you know, really enjoy being on an adventure and having a picturesque view in front of us. And, and some of us enjoy living vicariously through others' um, pictures and views and their adventures that they take. Yet, I think we all can agree that the diversity in God's creation is something to marvel at. And we live in one of the most beautiful places on the planet. I'm, I'm sure of it. Most of us, if we have made the choice to live in Waynesville, if we have chosen to move here or to stay here and grow up here, we live here because, in part, of the landscape, of the beauty that's around us, of the clean and fresh mountain air and the, the quaint small town of Waynesville. It's something that really feeds our souls. And we value our views. Because when you go and look for a house, you know, that's one of the things that they tell you, oh, the view from the porch, oh, the view from the porch. And if you can afford such a view, you know, it's, it's definitely worth it. And because we live here, we're able to enjoy spending time outside. We're able to have a close access to hiking trails and search, we can search for breathtaking waterfalls and seek out the best fishing holes all around um, and try out our fly gear and look for the best two trees to hang our hammock and just sit and rest in the wilderness and looking up at the canopy of the trees and, and enjoying the clear skies or the clouds in the skies or hiking a, a very vigorous hike and achieving the summit and re receiving the reward of the unbelievable view that is before us. The list goes on and on and on. So why? Why do we have this itch to be outside, to go exploring for the, we have this itch for the days now to become warmer sooner so we can be, more, be outside more and enjoy this space. And then when once we get outside, why is it that we feel peace? We feel renewal and wholeness, spiritual rest and rejuvenation. So I want you to think of a place that you feel deeply connected to. If you want to close your eyes and be a part of that process, go ahead. Think of that place that, that is meaningful for you. Where is it? Maybe it's close by, somewhere familiar. Maybe it's like me, a childhood memory. Maybe it's somewhere really far from here. 
but what do you see around you? What is it that you see below you? And what's above you? What are the sounds in that place? What do you feel while you're there? And what do you smell? So we all have those places that we cherish. We all have those, those places that are at the core of our identity and have really shaped us as people. And when we visit these places, we have a sense that God is there. God's presence is there. And we feel this connection with nature. Creation Justice Ministries um, article that I read this week has, um, is called Sense of Space. And the author writes, God's creation teems with God's life-sustaining presence. Just as all plants and creatures depend on ecosystems, we as humans depend on a community of human and non-human life. And this interdependence is not only about survival, but about our self-identity. We create meaning and feel belonging based on our surroundings. So we feel connected to creation because God is present in creation. God is in all things, and everything that has ever been created has divine breath in it. And when we yearn to explore and we yearn to see beautiful views and enjoy a sunset or enjoy a sunrise, we are yearning to be in God's presence. Pope Francis wrote in his encyclical, The universe unfolds in God who fills it completely. Hence, there is a mystical meaning to be found in a leaf, in a mountain trail, in a dew drop, in a poor person's face. The ideal is not only to pass from the exterior to the interior to discover the action of God in the soul, but also to discover God in all things. So the scripture I picked today is it's Colossians, and it might not necessarily be the scripture you might anticipate on a creation Sunday, but I think it says a whole lot about creation for us. And it names that the risen Christ, Jesus, is the source and sustainer of everything. That means that all rivers, all mountains, the trout, the hemlocks, they all have their beginning in Christ and live in Christ. So verses 15 through 17 say, He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. For in him all things in heaven and on earth were created, things visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or powers, all things have been created through him and for him. He himself is before all things, and in him all things hold together. So if Jesus is holding this whole world together, that God's love must be for all humanity and all creation. Therefore, our love must be for all humanity and all of creation. So when we think about the creation stories in the Bible, more than likely we think about Adam and Eve. We think about Genesis 2, where we think about the creation in the garden. Or maybe we think about Genesis 1, where we think about when God created, God created in six days, called everything good, and seventh day rested. So it's probably stretched to think about Jesus being involved in creation. Because it doesn't exactly make sense in the timeline of things if we think about it linear. But yet, it, it absolutely does. Because at the very beginning, Jesus was with God. And we remember the first chapter of the Gospel of John says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word means Jesus in this. And the Word was with God. And the word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him. And without him, not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life. And the life was the light of all the people. So everything and all creation comes into existence through Jesus. So Jesus is the glue that holds everything together. And so not only does Jesus play a major role in creation, but his journey to the cross is the way in which God makes peace and reconciliation with heaven and everything on earth. 
So God creates out of love. Everything in this planet is beloved by God. So in Genesis 2, when God creates the first human, Adam, God lovingly picks up a clod of dirt and breathes life into him to create man. Then God created the garden and the plants, commanded the plants to come out of the ground and the trees to grow and and made sure that the waters flowed freely and so there wasn't need for, for anything and it established that life all around. And then God picked up the soil again and breathed and created every single living creature and creepy crawling thing on the earth. So we, in essence, are made of the same earth that all the other creepy, crawling things and birds of the air and animals are made with. Our God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit formed us all lovingly in God's hands. Norman Wiersba, the professor, one of the professors at Duke Divinity School, has done a lot of thinking about creation and how to think about creation Um, as Christians. And so he says, when we talk about God's love, we talk about how great God's love is for humans, for all of us. Consider the fact that God's love is just as deep for the plants, the animals, and the waters. I think that's true. We often preach and teach about the greatness of God's love and how powerful God's love is and the relentless nature of it and that it never wavers and all those things are absolutely true. But what if God's love is just the same for everything God created? What if God's love for people was just as strong as God's love for everything else, for the rivers, the trees, the bees, the trout, the elk, everything then shouldn't we return that same love for all of created things? When we think about Jesus being a creator with God, then we can't help consider this to be true because when Jesus talks and preaches, everything is about love. Everything is about sharing, about being a community, and is about one another being together around a common table. So when Jesus teaches to us that to love as God loves, then he must mean that we should love creation as God loves too. So I guess the first step to loving something is getting to know it (laughs) and understanding it. And so I got to thinking, and I realized that I don't really know a lot about where we live as far as, you know, the intricacies of the flora, the fauna, the animals, you know, all those things. I know how to get places, um, but that's about it. And so I started thinking, okay, where can I start to learn something? Because I couldn't stand up here on Earth Day and not have learned something (laughs) about creation. So I I looked some things up, and I thought, you know what? I'm going to um, learn about what a watershed is, and I'm going to learn about what our watershed is, and so I did. And so I looked it up, and I started thinking, um, I looked at Haywood Waterways, which is a great organization that educates and advocates um, and evaluates and cleans up all the streams and bodies of water around in our county. And I thought about how thankful I am to them for all the hard work they do, because they work hard to make the water quality better for us all and for the fish and for every creature. And I learned that because of the way our beautiful little county is situated in the mountains in our valley, we are in a a headwaters county, which means that no water comes and flows through our county to supply it. So we have our own water supply that's just for us, that's just ours. And so this water, waterway, is, is fed just by the groundwater that's here and the rain that falls from the sky. So it's ours, and it's ours to take care of and to clean and to make sure we still have some. So it's ours together. And so today is Earth Day. So happy Earth Day to everybody. Hope you're going to have a great day today. Enjoy being outside this weekend. And, you know, I started thinking about that. You know, it happens every year. And it has has, since it started 48 years ago. And it started out as a way to evaluate and to think about our Earth because there were some, there are concerns about our Earth and the way that it's being polluted and the smog and the effects that it has. And, but Earth Day is a great day to celebrate, too, and to be thankful. And we, so we take time to learn about our Earth. And I know the preschool here took time to learn about Earth because I got things home from crafts that Jack did in the preschool of learning about Earth. And I know that Wyatt's daycare um, and the one-year-old class, they went outside and they planted little flowers in and, and their little um, courtyard they have in the front yard of their little classroom. Um, and I knew because I saw the flowers and I saw his clothes after he had planted. And he must have really loved dirt because it was everywhere. 
And um, Caroline spent time with her at her school at Riverbend. They started planting vegetables and learning about vegetables. So, you know, all around us, we're learning and we're getting into the dirt and we're enjoying and celebrating. Maybe we went on a hike this weekend or just went outside and played because it was such a beautiful day. And so on Earth Day, we celebrate creation. And we take time to walk out the, outside and we smell and we get, breathe in all the pollen that makes us cough. <laughs> But we also um, participate in projects to help keep our earth clean by picking up trash or cleaning streams or um, maybe thinking about ways that we can be greener in our households. So Earth Day happened the first time 48 years ago, and now 192 countries participate in this worldwide, and I think that's a really big deal. And so this year, uh, the focus of Earth Day is encouraging the world to get rid of single-use plastics and is calling for a regulation of disposable plastics. So while plastics are wonderfully convenient, and I use them all the time, and they're handy and in many ways necessary to daily life, I think when we use them irresponsibly or excessively, they can have lasting effects on our earth, by, as we can see by the creatures that ingest them or get caught in them. So in essence, I just want to love creation as God loves creation. So the answer to the question I started with today is why are we drawn to, the, to outside why are we drawn outside to explore the world? It's because of our deep connection to the earth. God breathes life into each one of us the same way that God breathes life into every creature and plant and waterway. And we seek out beautiful places to enjoy and are rejuvenated by fresh air in our souls because we are, created, we are connected to our creator God in those moments. So when we have our feet in a stream, or we step out at an overlook on the parkway and are awestruck by the view, or we have our hands in the dirt and we're planting things, or take a moment to soak in the full experience of our favorite places on earth, we are one with God. We are one with each other. And we're one with Jesus. And we all sense God's love and feel God's peace because the presence of God is tangible and real. Thanks be to God. stand as we sing our closing song this morning.
Thank you all for coming today. And I'm about to give a benediction and tell you to go, but I don't want you to go yet. I'd like for you to hang around for about maybe 45 minutes um, because our church conference is going to happen right here. We're going to be setting up some floor microphones for you all to have access to ask questions and, and making sure we've got enough space for others who come. Uh, but And there's, like I said, uh, fresh coffee and refreshments. So uh, we'll, we'll hang around together. We'll start the conference as quickly as we can. Uh, so now go in peace. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. God bless you. Amen.